Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Jason's daughter. My dad is making um, venison. I love venison, especially my dad's. Hey folks, this is Jason Good with The Good Life Outdoors here in the kitchen and I'm about to share a recipe that I love with you. So I'm going to be doing a venison shank asabuco. Um, I'm going to be using an instant pot um, and cast iron. You know, the instant pot does have a saute feature, but I do prefer the sear I get off a nice hot cast iron pan. So I'll be running you through the recipe. If you've never used venison shank, this is a great recipe to try. It's an underutilized cut of meat. A lot of folks either just cut it off when they're quartering the quartering the animal and don't use it or they uh, take the meat off the bone and, and just use that to grind up but using it as a bone-in piece of meat is awesome way to cook there's a lot of connective tissue and uh, once you start breaking that down it turns nice and silky and it's just got a lot of good flavor to it so give it a try if you like I'll run you through the recipe um, how I do all the uh, the cooking on there and then uh, kind of show you how it turns out so Stick around, we'll get started. So of course we start with our venison shanks. I've already gone ahead and cut these down. I used a reciprocating saw because I don't have a proper bone saw. Uh, so you can kind of see I've cut these into kind of sizable chunks um, here on the, on the ham side. These are nice and thick, you know, get a little thinner as you go to the, uh, towards the more of the forearm area. But uh, those are all nice and cut up. From there we move to the vegetables. We have onion, carrot, celery, and garlic. I'm gonna be using some parsley and rosemary. I like using rosemary. Uh, one, I grow it here at the house and I have it on hand, but I think it tastes really good with venison. Uh, we're also gonna be making a little gremolata with, with uh, lemon, garlic, and parsley, so the parsley's good to have around it as well. We'll also have some diced tomatoes and tomato paste, and then some white wine and chicken broth. Here's the Instant Pot. Um, if you've not used one, again, it's a great uh, great tool for the kitchen. It does a really good job of, of getting game meat nice and tender. Um, I found that you have to cook it a little longer uh, than you would if, if a recipe calls for beef or, or lamb, but uh, this does a great job. Uh, as I mentioned before, I will be using cast iron skillet to sear everything and get everything sauteed up before I put it in here. So this is really going to be more the uh, the pressure cooking container as opposed to the full meal um, the full meal solution. So I'm going to start off with giving a, a good amount of salt and pepper to the meat itself and just let that kind of get onto the meat. Make sure I get as many sides as I can with it. Now I'm going to do a rough chop on the onions, celery, and carrots. Then I'll move over to the garlic, the rosemary, and the parsley. Okay, I've got the pan screaming hot here, so I'm gonna go ahead and start browning the I'm going to let these kind of go about a minute per area, but you have to make sure everything gets nice and brown, especially these cut ends. Just want to make sure I get some good color on this all the way around, have it nice and seared. Sometimes that wants to just kind of roll around on you, try to keep it to where it 
keeps good contact with the pan. Some of the smaller pieces are ready to come off and just setting them aside on a plate. Now for this next step, I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat down just a tad. Take the rest of this meat off. Add a little olive oil and saute the vegetables. Add a little salt and pepper to these. These are cooking down. I'm going to go ahead and put the garlic and the herbs in just to kind of get those aromatics going. I'm going to go ahead and transfer the meat over into the Instant Pot. Go ahead and add the vegetables over that meat. Now I'll rearrange this a little bit to where it kind of all sits together. But I need to deglaze the pan with wine, so I'm going to do that now. So this is where the wine comes in. We put about a half cup in here. Get that all nice and happy. I'll scrape and get any bits that may have come off the meat and then uh, add that back into the instant pot over all the vegetables and the meat. So as you can see everything's down in there I'm going to kind of move stuff around just so that the vegetables can kind of get in and around the meat and help them as they're cooking. So I'm going to add some tomato paste probably about a half of this little can in here. Kind of stir it around and get it mixed up with the meat and such. Then I'm going to add about a cup of chicken stock. At this point I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that all of the meat and everything in here is nice, nicely spaced and so everything can cook evenly. And then I'm going to take a can of diced tomatoes and just pour that over the top. I'm not going to mix that in or anything. It's just going to cook with that on top. And there's everything in the pot. Now we put the lid on the pot. Make sure it's got a nice seal. I usually check my seal before I start. Just make sure it's nice and seated. Put it on. Make sure that it's all closed off. This recipe, I'm gonna put it in there for 50 minutes. Now again, this is more than what would probably be recommended for beef, but I found that it uh, breaks down the materials and all the, uh, all the connective tissues much better if you leave it in there a little longer, especially for venison. And there we go. simple gremolata and basically I'm just going to mince all this stuff up together. I have the lemon zest, garlic, and parsley and we'll be putting this over the meat when it's all done. Just quietly mix it and chop it. Get it all nice and Nice and fine. It's time to release the pressure. Then 
that looks and smells amazing. So I'm gonna plate this up. A bit of the venison on here. And this is about fall off the bone tender. Literally the bones are falling off this thing. There's a nice big piece of meat right there. Put more of the sauce on there. Sprinkle some of the grimolata over the top. Now this is the lemon parsley and garlic. I'm gonna serve this up with a side of sweet potatoes and onions. I always like pairing sweet potatoes and venison. I think it's good flavors that go together. And that is a lovely and delicious meal. Cheers from my table to yours. So there you have it, venison shank asabuco. Delicious dish, fairly easy to make, and a good way to use the uh, the shank, which I believe is a underutilized piece of meat. So I will post the recipe down in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I usually get back to you very quickly. If you wanna see more of videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. If you do subscribe, go ahead and hit that notification button. That'll get you, um, a notification as soon as I post new videos which I have several coming up and if you like what you saw give me a thumbs up so thanks so much for following along y'all take care thanks a lot